perkataan dia adalah define. And define apa? Define impulse. So, what is impulse? Impulse is the product of force, okay. Product of force daya dengan the time interval. The product of force and time interval. Therefore, impulse adalah, kalau dalam bentuk equation adalah J equals to F darab dengan time interval. Which J adalah awak punya impulse. Okay, F adalah force. Dan delta T adalah time interval. Time interval. Okay. And one thing that you need to know as well is, ni benda wajib ya, direction of impulse same as direction of force. Okay. Direction of impulse J sama dengan direction of force. Same as direction of force. So, what is the unit untuk impulse? Anyone tahu tak apa unit untuk impulse? Okay, before tu, Miss nak tanya. Impulse ni, korang rasa vector quantity ke skala quantity? Guys, anyone? Vector. Vector, very good. Impulse vector. adalah vector quantity. So, maksud vector quantity, maksudnya dia ada both uh, direction dan juga magnitude. So, Miss memang suka keulang benda ni banyak kali tau. Sebab apa tau? Sangat penting. Bila dia ada magnitude, uh, direction, kita akan ambil kira positif dan negatif dia. So, sekarang, apakah unit untuk impulse? Okay, unit untuk impulse adalah kg ms negative 1 or another one adalah ns. Sebab force adalah newton dan time adalah second. So, senang cerita, unit dia same as momentum. So, impulse and momentum have the same unit. Okay, boleh? This is Boleh, Miss. Alright, okay. This is impulse. Okay, Miss bagi masa. Okay, if you guys are done, let me know. Miss nak proceed. Okay, kalau dah bagi tahu ya. Dah, yang lain? You all, are you done? Dah, sudah. Dah, okay, Miss proceed. Okay, this one, okay. Yang ini Miss tak habis explain lagi tau. Ni kejap eh. Miss ke sini dulu. Okay, now. Sebenarnya Miss nak korang tengok this definition. Okay, this definition dia cakap. Okay, apa yang dia cakap? Dia cakap the impulse, the impulse momentum theorem states that. So, ini state. Bila state kena buat dalam ayat ya. The change, alright, the change in momentum of an object equals to the impulse applied to it. So, this is the very important keyword, equals. Okay, what does it mean? Okay, Miss akan explain. Maksudnya, perubahan momentum awak itu sama dengan impulse yang di-apply olehnya. So, okay, to make you macam further understanding, I'll show you this video. Give me a moment. Kejap ya. Okay. Everyone please just uh, tengok dulu video ni. And then nanti Miss akan explain in details ya. About momentum. Because this video is about the change in momentum. And in order for an object's momentum to change, a force needs to be exerted. So here's two examples. So a car with momentum of 20,000 kilogram meters per second hits a wall. 
and its momentum goes from this to zero. So it ends up as zero when it hits the wall. So this means that there has been a change in momentum and it was caused by the force exerted by the wall on the car. The change in momentum in this case happened very quickly and therefore the car experiences a very large force. Now if on the other hand the car crashed into a big cushion it would experience the same change in momentum it would still go from this momentum to zero but it would happen over a longer period of time because the cushion has a bit more give so the car will experience a much smaller impact force as a result and in fact the longer the impact time the lower the impact force and we can express this as an equation so force equals the change in momentum divided by the time taken and this is just another version of Newton's second law F equals ma except we use the equation for acceleration and we substitute in for a so it will end up looking like this after we've substituted for a now it's just a case of multiplying out the brackets so here we have the change in momentum at the top because remember p equals mv momentum is mass times velocity so this here is the change in momentum and it's divided by the time taken and that gives you the force of the impact so let's rearrange this and then discuss what happened to the car earlier so if we multiply both sides by t we get this so f times t which is called impulse is equal to the change in momentum so delta p for change in momentum so let's take this and look at the two cars above I'll write down the equation again so the impulse is equal to the change in momentum now the change in momentum is going to happen one way or another because the car will go from having some momentum to having no momentum now we can achieve this change in momentum in two ways we can either have a large force over a very short time as with the brick wall or we can have a small force over a longer time and of course it's much better for the driver and the passengers if they experience a smaller impact force so car safety features such as airbags and crumple zones are all designed to increase the impact time therefore reducing impact forces and it's also why cyclists wear helmets and why gymnasts train on mats now seat belts are slightly different they're they're slightly elastic so they do have a bit of give but they're mainly there to connect you to the car so that you decelerate at the same rate as the car instead of flying through the windscreen okay so that was just a short video on impact force okay now my question is what do you understand from that video or oh, you understand nothing guys what do you understand Bedega miss? Boleh miss. Okay. Okay, apa yang awak faham dengan video tu? Awak nampak tak? Awak nampak tak macam mana dia cakap impulse tu sama dengan change in momentum? Okay, apa yang awak faham? Hmm, anyone what do you understand from that video? Quick quick. Lo, what do you understand from that video, Lo? Hmm? 
Impulse equals to change of momentum. Okay. Alright. Okay, one point. Okay, anything when a, else? When the change of momentum is constant, the impulse's force is depend on the time. Very the good. Yes, correct. Yes, correct lo. Okay, thank you. Okay, it's okay. Siapa yang tak yang macam like blur-blur about that video, I explain again. So, jangan risau. Okay, first of all, kita tengok dulu dia cakap the impulse momentum theory states that the change in momentum. Okay, apakah itu change in momentum? Okay, change in momentum maksud dia adalah awak akan ada momentum final tolak dengan momentum initial. So, ini adalah perubahan momentum. Okay, ini adalah perubahan momentum. Change in momentum. Korang boleh tulislah. This is change in momentum. Okay, then dia cakap change in, in momentum is equals to the impulse. Therefore, therefore J awak sama dengan change of momentum. Sama juga dengan momentum final tolak dengan momentum initial. Okay, now what is the formula for impulse? Tengok balik tadi Miss dah tulis. Apa formula impulse? Anyone? Anyone? Apa formula impulse? Force darab dengan hmm. time interval. Very good. So, dia adalah force darab dengan time interval. Okay, kita tulis dulu. Dia adalah force darab dengan time interval. Well, so momentum. Apakah formula momentum? Okay, sekarang kita tengok dia ada momentum final dan juga momentum initial. Okay, apakah formula untuk momentum? Mass time velocity. Mass time velocity. Dan kita tahu kalau final dia adalah final velocity. Halaju akhir. Kalau initial dia adalah halaju awal. Okay, boleh? So, this is the change in momentum lah. Nampak tak? MV minus MU. Jadi, mathematically, Miss boleh buat FT equals to mass darab dengan V minus U. Okay, boleh. So, this is the important formula. So, formula ni, apa yang penting korang, first awak kena tahu. Change in momentum adalah momentum final tolak momentum initial. So, awak ada inilah tiga ni. Okay, boleh. So, salin dulu. Okay, siapa yang tak faham macam mana dapat equation ni? Okay, so this is the three equation. Di mana F awak adalah impulsive force. F adalah impulsive force. Okay, take note ya perkataan impulsive force lagi mesti nak guna. Impulsive force. Ataupun kadang dalam soalan dia orang akan cakap average force. And T adalah time of impact. Okay. And then M adalah mass. Dan V adalah final velocity halaju akhir. Dan U adalah initial velocity. Okay, boleh? Alright, kalau done, bagi tahu kat Miss here, Miss nak proceed untuk terangkan lagi apakah itu impulse. Okay, when you guys are done, do let me know ya. Yeah? Dah, Miss. Dah? Okay, yang lain? Alia dah ke Alia? Dah. Ah. Uh, Tan Wei Yi, are you done? Tan Wei Yi? Yes. Sharini? Done. Done kan? Okay. Uh, yang lain betul dah ke? Mesti tak sebut nama. Done ke? Ya. Yeah. Dah, Miss. Uh. Okay, dah. Okay, so Miss akan guna space kat bawah ni untuk melukis ya. Okay, Miss akan lukis benda yang sama. I'll draw dua kereta. Okay, Miss akan melukis. So, Miss harap korang perlukis ni eh. Okay, so awak ada kereta. 
Okay, you have car. And your car is moving, eh? Please, okay. Your car is moving. So, bila your car is moving, maksudnya dia ada apa? Kalau car is moving, dia ada apa, guys? Velocity. Okay, velocity, betul lah. Then, dia ada momentum. mass. Momentum. Momentum. Very good. So, the car is moving. Okay. The car is moving. Cuma, kereta yang pertama ini, okay, ada dua tau. So, this is the first car and this is the second car. Okay, cuma bezanya kereta yang pertama ni dia pergi langgar wall. Dan kereta yang kedua ni dia langgar cushion. So, this is wall. Dan ini adalah cushion. Okay, so... Object, okay, car. Car is moving and has mass. So, maksudnya dia ada momentum. For example, I assume momentum dia 1000. So, both of, them, both of them have the same initial momentum. Okay, I put ni sebab macam ni. Supaya awak nampak. PI, initial momentum. PI awak adalah 1000 kg ms negative 1. And then, ini pun sama. Initial momentum adalah 1000 kg ms negatif 1. Okay, dan selepas itu, final momentum dia. Okay, final momentum dia adalah kosong. Sebab apa dia kosong? Sebab bila lepas dia dah langgar wall tu, dia akan berhenti. Kereta berhenti. So, no more pergerakan. So, bila tak ada pergerakan, momentum adalah kosong. Sama juga dengan cushion. Lepas kereta dah langgar cushion tu, Dia dah tak ada pergerakan. So, remember, bila dia tak ada pergerakan, there's no momentum. Your momentum is zero. So, your final momentum adalah zero kg ms negative one. And then, ini pun sama. Awak punya final momentum is zero kg ms negative satu. Alright. Now, now, Bila dia dah langgar wall, okay, Miss nak tanya, bila dia langgar wall ni, awak rasa force yang dikenakan adalah tinggi atau kurang? Tinggi. Tinggi kan? Okay, now, persoalan ni, awak cuba tengok ni wall kan? Ni kan wall. Okay, change in momentum dia occur dengan secara cepat atau perlahan? Okay, awak tengok ah, bila awak langgar wall, awak imagine lah, you need to imagine. Okay, let's do some imagination right now. So, awak tengah driving. Okay, awak tengah driving dan awak langgar wall. Awak rasa kereta awak tu akan berhenti dengan cepat ke dengan perlahan? Cepat. Cepat. Very good. So, I want that ni. So, bila dia berhenti dengan cepat, maksudnya perubahan momentum dia berlaku dengan cepat. Apakah maksud perubahan momentum? Maksud dia daripada dia ada 1000 kg meter per second sampai ke 0 kg meter per second, perubahan tu berlaku dengan cepat. So, daripada 1000 ke 0, Cepat. Dia punya perubahan momentum tu berlaku dengan cepat. So, awak boleh cakap, awak boleh cakap, change of momentum occurs very fast. Okay, so awak boleh cakap, change in momentum occurs very fast. Change of momentum occurs very fast. Fast. So, dia berlaku dengan sangat cepat. So, maksudnya kereta akan hit then stop. Hit then stop. So, bila kereta dah hit the wall, dia akan stop immediately. So, tu dia adalah hit then stop. Okay, yang kedua, apa maksudnya apa sebenarnya? Okay, lepas berlaku perubahan momentum, kan Miss cakap change of momentum sama dengan impulse. Betul tak? So, dengan Impulse dan, okay, remember I said, change of momentum is equal to the impulse applied to it. Okay, sekarang awak punya kereta langgar wall. Wall, betul tak? Sekarang wall awak tu akan memberi impulsive force kepada kereta. Okay, tulis dulu. Saya akan berikan sekali lagi. So, literally, create, I mean, impulsive force akan terjadi... Impulsive force from wall to the car. Okay, apakah impulsive force ni sebenarnya? So, literally, impulsive force ni dia adalah ini. 
So waktu awak dah langgar wall tu, awak akan ada impulse ataupun kita kata nama lain dia adalah impulsive force. So maksudnya, maksudnya Miss ulang balik lagi sekali ya. So maksudnya, okay. Bila kereta langgar wall, okay, bila kereta langgar wall, kereta awak akan ada perubahan momentum dengan sangat cepat. Kenapa dia dengan sangat cepat? Sebab kita langgar wall. Bila awak langgar wall, kereta awak immediately stop. Okay, contohnya initial momentum awak seribu. Lepas tu, dah langgar wall, dia terus jadi kosong. Kenapa dia jadi kosong? Sebab dia dah berhenti. Tapi kisah ini dia berlaku dengan sangat cepat, very fast. Dia hit dan stop. Okey, jadi wall awak ni dia akan membeli, memberi balik reaction terhadap kereta tu. So awak ingat macam Newton's third law. Every action ada reaction dia. So bila awak ada langgar wall, action awak. So dia akan ada reaction. So akan ada kesan terhadap kita, terhadap pemandu tu. So bila awak langgar wall, force yang dikenakan terhadap awak adalah tinggi. Betul tak? Ting tinggi. Kenapa tinggi? Sebab awak langgar wall. Okay, so sebab itu lepas dah langgar, impulsive force akan memberi impact balik terhadap pemandu itu. Okay, jadi, jadi sebab itu awak boleh buat satu conclusion. So force, impulsive force yang diberi adalah tinggi dalam masa yang singkat. Bila force tinggi, awak punya time adalah kurang. Okay, boleh? Tak apa kau tulis macam ni lah. So you have force... Okay, for example, you have force and time kan? So literally, force yang diberi tu adalah tinggi dan time awak adalah rendah sebab dia adalah very fast. So very fast maksudnya masa awak adalah ren rendah. Okay, boleh faham tak apa yang Miss cuba masukkan? Guys, ada yang confused? Faham, faham. Okay, ataupun jom kita semua buat benda ni. Okay, awak ambil tangan awak, awak, awak pukul meja. Awak pukul meja. Pukul secara perlahan ya. Misal nak rosakkan tangan korang. Okay. Ambil tangan awak. Awak pukul meja. So lepas awak you already hit the table. Awak boleh rasa. Force awak boleh rasa sakit tak? Korang boleh rasa sakit tak lepas hit the table? Sakit. Hmm. Sakit tu lah impulsive force dikenakan terhadap korang. Maksudnya. Okay. Bila. Okay. Sekarang kita. Tangan kita ada mass. Okay. Dia ada mass dan dia juga ada velocity dia. Sebab dia tengah bergerak eh. Okay, so dia tengah ada mass dengan velocity, so dia ada momentum. Okay, so contoh momentum ni uh, 50, uh, tak boleh sampai 50. Uh, 2, contohnya 2 kg meter per second lah contohnya kan. So, miss hit the table. So, when I hit the table, miss boleh rasa balik ada impact dekat tangan miss. So, itu adalah impulsive force dia. Okay, boleh? So, every reaction akan, every action akan ada reaction dia balik. Kalau ayat mudah dia. Okay, boleh faham? So, itulah video tu duduk cakap. Sebenarnya. Okay. Alright. Next one. Next one pun sama juga. So, tapi ini berbeza. Bila kereta awak langgar cushion, awak rasa kereta tu akan immediately berhenti ke? Ke dia akan ambil masa untuk berhenti? Siapa tahu? Ambil masa. Very good. Dia akan ambil masa untuk berhenti. Jadi, change of momentum dia. Change of momentum. Sekejap eh. Change of momentum occur over a period of longer time lah. Occur over a long period. So a long period ni masa yang lama lah ialah sebab dia cushion kan dia bukannya wall. So dia akan occur over a long period. So bila dia occur over a long period maksudnya dia dah hit tapi took some time to stop. Hit, dia dah hit tapi hit but took some time to stop. Okay, boleh. So, mas maksudnya dia akan berhenti kereta itu. Maksudnya momentum air dia akan kosong. Tetapi dia akan ambil masa yang lama sikit untuk ada change of momentum tu. Sebab dia hit cushion. Kenapa? Sebab bila dia hit cushion, force dia adalah quite rendah sebenarnya. 
So force dia adalah quite rendah. Sebab itu dia adalah smaller force tapi dia punya time tu adalah long longer. So impulsive force tu adalah daripada cushion ke car. So impulsive force adalah daripada cushion to car. Impulsive force from cushion to car. Okay, boleh salin. Ada tak yang macam tak faham? So, sekarang contohnya kalau kita, kita nak berada dalam situasi mana? Situasi satu atau situasi yang kedua? Dua. Yang Dua. kedua. Okay, so contohnya nanti kalau ada soalan macam ni, awak kena pastikan awak nak berada dalam situasi yang kedua. So, kita nak less impact on us. Small force. Kita nak small force sebab kita tak nak cedera. Betul tak? So, kita tak mau bigger force. We want small force over a longer period of time. Okay. Okay, bila korang tengok dua ni kan, okay, mi sambung sikit lagi dekat mana tengah-tengah ni mi sambung. Okay, so bila korang tengok dua benda ni, awak kena tahu satu benda tau. Change of momentum dia adalah constant. Apa maksud change of momentum dia constant? So, awak tengok lah, bila FT awak equals to change in momentum. Change of momentum kan MV minus MU. 